In this video, I'm going to go over a piece of software known as Conversine. Now, if you found this video on YouTube, I will provide a link below the video to show you how to install it and how to use the software. Now, this is a Conversine is a cross-platform batch image processor that allows you to convert, resize, rotate, and flip infinite number of images with a mouse click. So, what you can basically do is convert multiple images at one time from one format to the other, or you can compress them if you're sending emails. Uh, images by email or if you're putting images on the website and you don't want to have a lot of large images for people that have slower internet or even fast speed internet with a lot of images it will take a long time for it to load your website so you can compress them so that it loads much faster now I've used this images before of my sister's house on another tool that I went over but this one right here converts to a large number of formats over a hundred different formats so I thought I would go over this one as well now here's the, some of the things that you can do with Comforcine. I'm not going to go over all the details of it now there's multiple ways Ways of installing it so if you have the software and center installed on your system you can look for conferencing within the software system and hit install to install it on your system another way to install it is to open up your terminal go sudo app get update or sudo app to update sudo app to install conferencing and there's the way to remove it if you'd like to download the binary file or the installation file for a variety of different type of packages for Linux different Linux distributions, you can go to pkgs.org and download the binary file that matches your system. Since I'm using a Ubuntu Mate 22.04, I downloaded the deb file, so I have it linked or directly here. Another way is to install it by Flatpak. You can click this to go to FlatHub to click the installation, or you can copy and paste this if you've got your system set up for Flatpaks. Another way is to go to GitHub and go to the release section, and this is especially if you're a Windows user. You can download the executable file, and for Linux users, you can download the source code and then install it on your system. So there's a variety of ways that you can install it on your system. Once you've got it installed, it should be placed in the graphics section of your menu if not reboot your system and you should see come for scene in the in the system on your menu now once you load it it will look like this you'll have a menu bar across the top then you have some buttons or some uh, toolbar across the top that allows you to do a variety of different things here's where you load your images and you can scroll down on the side and perform multiple functions with those images as you can see here once you click the open button you then can select the images you want to open and it will place them here now when you perform a function on your images they're not going to be performed until you check the images so you can individually check the images or you can choose check all and if check all would be great if you have hundreds or thousands of images you can click and to check them all at one time you can also right click in the area here to bring up a pop-up menu to allow you to check check all uncheck or uncheck all items or remove a selected images or remove all the images here's where you drop down to change the format and like I said there's over a hundred different formats to choose you can click the images set and to change the different images if you got a PNG instead of rather having a transparent background you can choose a different color background for the transparency area here's a little uh, example of some of the images within the drop down menu uh, as you can see here there's a variety of things that you can do with different set. this is the image setting button so where you can change the quality you can change it to 80 or 75 and still get a great quality when you're compressing the images that you have selected here's where you can say replace the transparent background if you choose a different color you have to choose that box or it will not replace the background you can then instead of uh, choosing the black color which is the default you can click that and change it to a variety of different colors and here uh, once that you're ready to convert you hit the conversion tool it'll go through and do the conversion it'll show you hundred percent when it's finished you can choose to open the destination folder if you already have it minimized you can hit the close button and open up that folder so you can see here the original file was 1.9 megabytes when I converted it without changing the resolution it dropped it or converted it down to 866 so taking this image and converting it it's almost less than half so if I was sending this across the internet by email or putting it on a website I would rather choose this file because it's much smaller and it wouldn't take as much time to load. Like I said, there's other features over here that allows you to rotate, to flip, to change your destination where you're 
uh, saving them to and here I showed you I go into the actions panel you shoot where you can change the resolution change the pixel size you can invert or flip an image by changing the resolution size you're decreasing it you can increase but it would probably cause it to look pixelated but if you're reducing something if you reduce the size of it especially if you're on a website you don't want a very large image and put it in a small area so you can reduce the resolution and by then compressing it from the original 1.9 megabyte you can compress it down to 218 kilobytes which would not take very long to load so you can also flip things so I have the website to show uh, how to use it let's actually show it in action so let me click on conversing let me go and uh, add images I'll go to my sister's images of her house I'll choose these images and see it's not going to select until I choose like check all it's got by default the JPEG as you can see here you can choose a, over a hundred different formats I'm gonna leave it the JPEG uh, extension here's your settings if you want to the the quality compression here I've just changed it up to 100% so if I were to go and convert them it would not change the file size if I go down and drop them like to 80% or 75 so I'm gonna go down to 75 then that way it's gonna reduce it to 75% uh, I'm going to leave that as automatic. You can cho choose to drop down, and I'm not going to get into details on that. Over on the right hand side, it will have a preview, men preview window of the selected file. So if I go down and choose different images, it will have a different uh, preview. Here you can change uh, the dimensions. Uh, I'm going to leave it the original uh, 1920 by 1080 and if you want to look at the pixel size you can see well no, these are larger so if I wanted to reduce them I could come over here and choose a different resolution but I'm gonna leave them at their original size just to show you from the original picture to the changed picture so let's drop it down here you can change the destination you can choose a different uh, rename and if you're putting them in the original folder you can choose overwrite but I suggest don't do that because if you do and something happens you can't go back and get your original file back unless you have them stored somewhere else here you can flip and rotate them by 90 degrees 180 degrees you can flip them horizontally or vertically I'm not going to do the flipping in this particular example so let's go and convert them and since I have them all selected I'm going to say convert it's completed I'm going to say open a, open the destination and here it's the the shrunken let me go to my original one so here's the original which is a uh, 216 by 1520 it's at 1.9 megabytes let me cl close it out or minimize it let me go to the shrunken one click the same except it says copy here it's the original image and here it's 866 so it's less than half and it at the same resolution so this is a great way of compressing images and you can even like since that's much larger than my screen resolutions if I wanted to save that as a wallpaper I could change it by going to pixel size and put the 1920 by 1080 or whatever matches your screen so hopefully this video has helped you understand how to use the program called Conferencing. I hope this video has been helpful and have a great day